really think I'd hit start, Rich. But anyhow, people are starting to file in. Let's give them a few minutes. After you know, everybody come to the front, take a seat. You know, don't leave the aisle seats empty. This isn't you know, Southwest Airlines. <laughs> Right. And they're starting to fill up. All right. So we can uh, probably get started in a second. Let me just, so I assume everybody out there can hear the sound of my voice. If some of you can, yes, people are raising their hands already. Very good. Very good. Thank you very much. And um, in, in a minute. And so, Let's see, somebody's texting something. Yes, very good. So we're going to start in a moment. Um, I want to welcome everybody. Today is another special presentation from my favorite loan agent, Jody Hapano with Golden One Credit Union. And, you know, I was talking to somebody this morning, uh, Jody, and there's a, a, I actually brought, brought this up because I've had agents, a couple of agents over the time ask me this. And the, the question is, um, the question was, somebody had said to me, well, Jody must refer a lot of business to you, referring to me, because, you know, you have her, you know, talk all the time. And so um, I, what I said today was that the, um, as of this point, I, Jody has not referred a buyer to me that has closed a real estate transaction. Now, I say that for two reasons. Number one, because I like reminding Jody that that's not happened yet. But number two, the point I'm trying to make is, is that the reason that I sponsor Jody and the reason that I want her to talk to you is not because she's purchased somehow my support, it's because she's a really good loan agent and she's got good loans and I trust her. And for those of you with some experience, um, not all loan agents can be trusted. Not all loan agents are good at loans. And so that's the reason that I keep inviting Jody to talk to you because I think it would help your business. And then the other thing about this co-branded marketing, you know, I I'm a real estate agent too. And I know lots of real estate agents and I understand we want everything for free. You know, there was an old line that if the agent won't steal your pencils at the office, they probably won't do anything. I, I understand that. However, at some point we need to be able to make a reasonable investment in some tools and systems. And so I'm just saying, be open to the possibility that you might want to make an investment into some of these tools and systems. That's my, that's all I got, and um, I'm going to turn it over to Jody. And there's a handout over to the side. If you guys are having trouble, let me know, and I'll paste it in a direct link. Um, if you have questions, go ahead and type them in. We may wait to the end to go through them. Um, anything I leave that I leave off? Anything, Jody? No, I think that's good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So <laughs> I'm just going to, all right, there we go. And okay. we're off. Go. Okay, so um, you can see my presentation, correct? The... Yes. Okay. We can see you. We can see your presentation. All good. Move my, so I don't have to look at my own face. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thanks for taking time to um, be on this call and uh, learn a little bit about co-branded marketing that um, I can uh, offer you here through Golden One. Um, let me move this, go to webinar viewer. I think I need that, okay. All right, so uh, a couple things I wanna touch on what Mike said, and Mike, I do appreciate that. Um, you know, it, it's not as common for loan officers to be able to refer much because typically buyers come to us already with an agent. That's why, you know, I work with you, um, you guys, more than I go out there and try to find buyers myself. It really doesn't kind of work that way. So, um, but in the event that I have a buyer that, um, you know, I think would be a good fit for a potential agent or something, then of course I'm, I'm happy to refer. It's just not as common. So um, kind of wanted to say that. Um, so that, and then also to touch on the, um, the investment that you 
need to make your on yourself here for marketing, especially for going into 2022. We all know that it, fall, winter, it's kind of when things slow down a little bit. And um, I'll touch a little bit about interest rates starting to creep up and they will definitely be higher in 2022. There's really no doubt about that. Um, but now's the time with a little bit of lag. Now's the time for us to focus on our, our plan for 2022. So that this time next year, October, or November 3rd of 2022, we'll have this call again. And I see 32 of you on this call right now. And I want 32 of you to raise your hand and say you had your best year. It doesn't just happen, right? People don't just walk into your house and say, I want to buy a million dollar house. So they don't just randomly call your line. You've got to get out there and put your face in front of people, put your name in front of people. Sometimes it takes multiple touches to even get a phone call, but that's part of what we do. We're in sales. Okay. So that you got to have the kind of mindset for that. You got to be prepared. It's going to be hard work. Probably get, get in, work with somebody for a long time, think you've got it covered. And then all of a sudden they skip out and go to a, a different agent. It happens. It's happened in the last two weeks. It, it, I got a call today from an agent who referred their buyer to me and then the buyer left, went to another agent. Okay. Made an offer. And I'm thinking what in the world but that's what they do sometimes. So there's ways to protect yourself from that. But, you know, you do have to have a little bit of thick skin in this industry, especially how competitive it is right now with lack of inventory and everybody's, you know, still out there trying to, you know, scratch and <laughs> maybe walk all over other people to try to get what they want. But anyway, um, to, to invest in yourself, you do have to pay to stay RESPA compliant. $20 a year to, to have these co-branded materials. Okay. Golden One pays um, for this service. And then it's the minimal charge of $20 just to stay compliant. Okay. We're obviously, there's no money being made on any of this. So if you don't think $20 is worth one year of, um, you know, marketing materials, you know, however many you want, when you want and all that, then um, you I don't mean to sound harsh, but maybe need to reassess your plan. Okay. $20 is, you know, not even a, what a bottle of wine. So, um, or, uh, you know, a cheap dinner out. So with that said, I have to say that to you guys and, um, we'll address, you know, when, if you're ready to sign up and stuff, then, you know, we'll, we'll go through the details of how you pay that and who you pay it and stuff. It doesn't come to golden one. It goes to the uh, company that we use that prepares these uh, materials. Okay. All right, moving on. So preparing for success in 2022, we are going to start with, um, and also I want to say if you've been on this particular call before, this is going to this is going to be similar to what I've shared in the past. Um, the reason I want to share it again is because it is the slow season and we do need to start working on our 2022 plan. And now is the time for us to do that. By the end of the call, I would love to have you guys email me individually with dates um, that we can do some of the presentations that I'm going to talk about. Like I, I want to get stuff booked. I want to, there's no reason to wait. We've got to get out there and get ahead of the crowd for 2022. And there's no time like the present. So um, individually email me or text me if you want. Um, if you're, if you say, yes, I want to start, you know, putting some dates on the books here and we can start marketing dates for some presentations, meetings, things like that. Let's do it. We have, seen and this has happened um, to an agent that referred me a buyer a couple of weeks ago that buyer left the agent that they'd been working with for a while to go to a redfin agent no not knocking redfin at all i'm just stating the facts here um simply because they got about a three thousand dollar credit from that agent now um i don't know you know purchase price wise did they kind of get a worse deal purchase price did they did they negotiate you know maybe the agent didn't negotiate that that grade, maybe they did, I don't know any of those details, but um, we've got to do something to set you guys apart if you're not <clears throat> if you're not an agent that's um, already uh, working in that capacity and you're a you know, single agent out there at EXP or Keller Williams or wherever you, you, know, you are, we've got to do something to set you apart, right? From working so hard with buyers and then at the end of the day, they leave you, even with a buyer brokerage, you know, they can cancel that. Um, so we got to do something to add value and that is going to be, um, with co-branded marketing tools, not the co-branded marketing that I'm going to go over is not just 
here's my face, here's my name and number, give me a call. It's, it is giving potential buyers and sellers a lot of information to help them make a more informed decision that will impact them in the future far more than any rebate that another agent would offer to get the deal, okay? So that's gonna be a huge focus going forward because the, those type of companies are only, I think, gonna increase, right? So, um, so when we go through these marketing materials, think about that in the back of your mind, why we're going to be giving people what we're going to be giving them. The rental market for 2022, um, I wanted to go over the projected uh, average rents for our area because they're going up. They've gone up dramatically in even the last five years, six years or so, and going up quite a bit more in uh, 2022. And I think this is something that um, you guys want to do a presentation together, home buyer seminar. Um, this is something that we will, that's hugely important to renters right now is to see all right, what's the cost of me buying a house now? While the rates are still low before they hit, you know, in the, the mid threes to even four or so. Um, what's, the, what's the financial impact of me waiting? What's the financial impact of me buying now? Locking in a 30 year fixed at, you know, 2.875. Uh, buying power goes up, payment goes down versus waiting six months or a year or so. So we'll talk about this and I want you guys to see it as well. So I'm gonna click this link now you've got this presentation i believe through email so this link should work for you um, if not you can clearly see it's rentdata.org so anybody can go to it okay oh, there we go all right so um move that out of the way here okay the average and of course there's a lot of places in california where it's it's a lot less expensive than the bay area right we all know that so the average is what it is here at the top, but then what we're going to do is look down here in the actual counties, okay? And then we're going to, it'll tell us exactly what the average fair market rent is for that particular county. For a, let's just say three bedroom, because typically that's what our clients are buying, right? Three, maybe four bedroom. So let's say the average rent price in California is 3000 for 2022. But if we look at um, San Mateo County, it's going to be 4111. Now this is rent. So this is the, this is what your future buyers are going to be paying in the year 2022 on average to rent, right? 12 month lease, 24 month lease, maybe they stay there five years, the lease is over, they literally hand the keys back and walk away with zero, maybe their security deposit, but that's not profit. Okay, so this is huge, right? Right now buying a home, say around a million dollars with the interest rates where you're at, your principal and interest will be around 4,000 or you know maybe 4,200 or so. Now, of course, yes, there's property taxes and home insurance, um, condos, HOA dues, right? But that's that still covers stuff um, of value, you know, uh, pool, tennis courts, whatever you have. Um, so there is, of course, taxes that they'll be paying, all right? So let's say the taxes for this would be around $1,200 a month, okay? $1,200 a month. Basically, what we need to show them is, all right, your rent and your principal and interest will be pretty similar. And yeah, you'll be paying a little bit more in property tax. But here's how that $1,100 a month in property tax is going to turn into $4,500 a month back in your pocket. Basically, showing them how much rent is going to increase, even going you know, further in the future, but how much value is going to increase equity in their home, right? So... The, the thing that's nice about where we are, and if, if, if you can even say it's nice, is that the fair market rent, San Mateo County, 4,100, right now where interest rates are similar to principal and interest payment. Um, fair market rent for Alma, uh, Alameda, 3,000. I think it's probably a little bit higher than that, but um, Contra Costa, 3,000. Santa Clara, 3,687. We go up to uh, Sonoma, 2851. Of course, it gets a little bit less. As you can see, the green areas are a little bit cheaper. Um, so let's let's just say we're in Shasta County. Having, you know, there buying a million dollar home, of course, you're, you're going to get a lot more house for that price, but it, it might be a little bit harder of a sell to have people wrap their head around it. But we're all Bay Area for the most part. Um, if you're not and you're down below, um, let's say Santa Barbara, 32.66 per month, but what you can buy there is going to be similar to 
um, principal interest will be sim similar to that price range. So uh, you guys take note of this website. It's really great, even if you know we don't do a presentation, but you're just sitting with a buyer trying to decide. Maybe you're at Starbucks and you're like, well, let's look at the numbers because that's important, right? It's not just um, you know being able to decorate your house and upgrading your kitchen, get new appliances and all that. It's it, this is a financial. Um, it, it impacts your your clients financially for decades to come, and we need to help people understand that as well, especially when they're paying a little bit more for a house right now than maybe they want to, maybe they're having to pay another $100,000. How can we help them um, overcome that challenge and that fear that they're gonna lose money, okay? So this is a great website, and I'm sure you, there's probably other websites out there too that maybe you've already looked at and you like, but um, but I, I think you guys should keep this uh, bookmarked in your uh, favorites and reference it often. Okay, so we'll close that. Go back to this. Okay, so little piece about Golden One and how we're a little bit different with lenders uh, in the lending world for uh, when we're dealing with people that, that rent and they want to buy a house and they've never owned a home before. We don't do verification of rent for the most part. It's very rare that we would do one. Um, what's great about that? Well, it's not because we don't care if they've paid rent on time. We do care and we want to make sure that we're setting them up for success, you know, in home ownership. But it's it's one of those things that sometimes can hold up closings. Okay, I've had, especially individual landlords, maybe they just don't want to send it in. They just don't care. Or they leave it on their desk for two weeks. Hey, my tenant's moving out. Good luck. I don't care. Whatever. Um, and so we don't need that. Um, so it helps us be able to keep you know our transactions closing on time. Um, what I would love to do is some home buyer seminars targeting our apartment complexes. I talked about this. Uh, I want to say back in July or maybe August or so, and I got a few people interested in it, but we haven't had I haven't had anybody say let's do it. I'm gonna put me on the books for next Thursday at 12:30. I'm coming to your office. We're gonna sit down. We're gonna hash out a plan. Okay, that's what I'm looking for out of this call is for for us to get together and meet and let's get some stuff planned. So home buyer seminar targeting apartment complexes. Um, we can do the co-branded marketing for that. Um, mail outs, flyers at the local coffee shops, at the library, um, you know, maybe even call some, you know, some of the county representatives and let them know what you're doing. Hey, you know, that they, it's important for, for our government to know that we're, our government leaders to know that we're, we're invested in this community as well. And we want to see home ownership uh, rise and people, you know, be, create more wealth and, you know, have better retirement in the future because they bought a house back in 2021 or 22. All right, so um, joint YouTube, uh, I would love to do that with you guys. I have to be a little bit careful um, compliance wise, so there will be the very limited things I can talk about Golden One specific. I can't talk about um, on social media. I can't um, give guidelines. I can't say uh, this is the interest rate, things like that, but I can I can go as far as I can take it and stay in compliance, okay? But those, I think that would be a great tool, something you can publish on your social media site. Facebook, Twitter, whatever it is you like to use, people can go back and reference it. Um, again, a thing of value that you're giving that honestly, a lot of agents aren't, right? In real estate, it's hard work, but then sometimes you can get lazy and just be like, eh, you know, whatever, it's not really worth it, but it is, okay? People in our day and age, they want knowledge. They can go online, Google a question, and they've got any, any answer to any question that could possibly ever exist. So we need to be the people that they come to first instead of googling and then getting you know agent here agent you know 15 different agents you know people that they could call we want them to say oh i remember jody and and mark did the youtube video about this particular subject and i want my partner and i to buy a house maybe my partner's got a little bit of like uh, pushback well let's watch the video again and see you know what it's really like look at the numbers you know this is what we could be looking at in our retirement portfolio in years and I think those are, would be really good things to set you guys apart from um, the average agent out there. Okay, mail advertising. Um, now, this is something that Mike, uh, and I know that some of you guys probably are, are agents outside of EXP. Um, I will give a little plug that if I was a real estate agent, I'd be working with Mike. So <laughs> um, I think if you guys have been on his calls before, then you know he's got a wealth of knowledge and um, really can help uh, help you grow your business as well. Um, 
but anyway, so so what I'd like to do is um, work with Mike on this to be able to target some of the apartment communities through these websites and offerings that he has to do some mail outs. Um, the cost on mailing out uh, advertisements, that is not covered with the $20 a year um, RESPA payment that you guys have to make. That's that's for the co-branded marketing that we'll get to here in a minute. Um, but this is something that I believe to stay RESPA compliant, we have to split this 50-50, okay? But as you can see here, um, this particular area, let's see, I can't see the details super, but two, okay, 252 mail pieces, um, approximately $48, say $50, we split that $25 each, but we've hit 252 buyers. If you get 1% turn on that, or 1% return on that, which is still pretty low, with one closing, you've well made your $50 back, okay? So um, please think about that when you're looking at the cost to advertise. You gotta make money, or you gotta spend money to make money, they say, um, and at least this is not astronomical. It's not thousands and thousands of dollars, okay? Cost of a dinner out. So if you're interested in, in doing this with us, then uh, let me know and uh, we'll get kind of get de more detail about your area, that, that kind of thing. Okay, so here's the co-branded. We're going to go over the co-branded flyers here. Uh, piece number one is a real estate report card. Now, this would be for, say, San Jose, California. This is going to give the median home price. It's going to give average number of renters versus homeowners, um, all sorts of informa information. It will give the a potential five-year gain on average, now it's not to the to the penny. I actually think that, well, this is for New Jersey, so that's why it's only 120,000. That's that's like a year and a half gain here, I believe. Um, but this is great um, to present to your potential buyers and even sellers. If sellers say, well, maybe they don't want to buy another house, they want to, you know, go rent somewhere or whatever. Um, probably not going to be as hard of a sell for this sellers, but for your buyers, especially first-time home buyers, um, this gives them a wealth of knowledge and it keeps your face and my face front of mind okay so when they think about this kind of stuff there you are smiling there i am smiling um and all of our contact information so that they can just pick the phone up send a quick text maybe an email whatever maybe a phone call even better um to find out more hey jody hey you know dan here how can i how can i be a part of this you know how can i help my family grow wealth this looks amazing five years i could you know, see a result of what, an average $400,000 in equity. You can't work hard enough to make that that quickly, you know, so um, I really like this is one of my favorite uh, pieces. Piece two, of course, going along with that appreciation data. And um, now the reason I want to point this out that the reason this says uh, Monmouth County in New Jersey is because the company that we use that creates all of this marketing material. They are located in New Jersey. So all of their stuff is going to say <laughs> that area. Um, but of course, we can do everything here uh, specific to uh, California. Appreciation after nine years, cumulative appreciation after closing cost. Um, that's not really going to be super, super drastic, but people do want to know what closing costs, you know, are incurred. And is that, st are they still going to, you know, after paying five, six thousand dollars, what, how is that going to impact them? Very minimal for us here. Cost of waiting. This is, uh, I want. I said that first one was my favorite. I think this is my favorite. I, I think all of them are my, fav my favorite. Um, but cost of waiting, of course, you know, people think, well, you know, there's not very much on the market, so I'm just going to wait this out. And that we, um, I know a lot of you guys that I work with have had buyers that were, you're, you've made maybe 10, 12 offers, can't find anything. Now their rent, or they've got to resign their lease, and they say, you know, peace out. I'll see you in six months or a year. Um, it's a hard work, I know, but uh, we, we got to keep kind of this part of the uh, the information that you give them top of mind for them so that they know, well, maybe do a 30 day or 60 day, you know, lease or something like that. So the cost of waiting is uh, super important. Um, it helps people put a number, a dollar amount on um, their, you know, delay on, you know, maybe wanting to pull the trigger here. Uh, another little chart here. Um, this is going to be county based. So Santa Clara County, San Mateo, Contra Costa, all those different counties everywhere. You know, this, this will be a little bit different. 
So when you're sitting with your client or we're doing our home buyer seminar together and we're in Santa Clara County, this is what we're going to present to them. And I bet you a lot of them are going to say, oh, wow, I did not realize that. That's crazy. I didn't think that values could go up anymore. Well, they have. 2015, you know, you almost to, to now you've almost doubled, if not gone over um, that in your average uh, price here in California. Um, we can talk about interest rates, how if we wait till rates are at 4% versus 2.75 or 2.875, what does that do to your buying power? You know, maybe maybe you could buy 1.3 and now with the interest rates going up, maybe you're at 1.1. So that's going to reduce how much you can buy. So another way to create the sense of urgency that, um, you know, time is of the essence. And this is all information that, that if you just turn on Bloomberg or any any news channel, CNN, even it, you can find the information about interest rates going up. It's not a, it's not something that um, anybody would say. Oh, you're just saying that to get me to hurry up. No, it is. It's widely published out there that that is the consensus, and it is already starting. We're starting to see a little bit of of movement um, based on you know what the Fed said about tapering. I'm sure you guys don't want to get into all of that detail, so we won't. Super boring. Um, anyway, all you need to know is rates are going to be going up next year. Um, so you've got a little bit of that here of that next chart talking about the uh, personal um, effects of interest rate and then also for the economy. Okay, buy versus rent. This is going to be super important for our uh, home buyer seminar targeting the apartment complexes. Well, and, and any rent doesn't have to be an apartment complex, but anywhere that there are renters. Um, buy versus rent. This is net gain by buying a house. And the, again, this is for New Jersey. So these numbers are going to be a little bit higher for us. But even in New Jersey, um, $231,835 in equity, um, that far outweighs how much money people are paying in property taxes, right? And also, I'm not a CPA, so I can't give tax advice, but if you're able to deduct taxes or have any deductions, um, property tax is a write-off. Okay. Bid over ask. Um, I won't get super, super into this one. I've, I've talked about it before, but this is something that will definitely help if we've got someone who, you know, might, maybe they have to offer a little bit more to get the property. Um, I am seeing appraisals coming in at contract price for the most part now. I'm not really seeing much um, in the way of, of uh, you know, $1.3 million purchase price and it comes in at 1.2. I'm not really seeing that. And I don't think um, it, many of my uh, co cohorts here and the, on the mortgage side are seeing that. So this might not be much of uh, use going forward, but if you do have that situation and someone has to have this house and they're going to pay a little bit more, then we can let them know what's the break even for that. Is it, you know, a year, two years, is it 10 years? Is it two months? What is it based on how much more they're spending? So this is a nice way of putting it um, in front of their, you know, in front of them, giving them the average increase giving them the dollar amount, average increase. Um, it really helps them solidify their decision to, you know, maybe go ahead and ask or spend a little bit more on that particular property. This just goes along with that same slide before, just a different way of looking at it. Okay. Um, strategies to overcome bid over ask. If, if you guys are experiencing that, um, we've got some ways to kind of overcome that. We can do some premium pricing, um, meaning that we're, you know, let's say someone's short, you know, ten or fifteen thousand dollars. We can do premium pricing, which means they get a little bit higher of an interest rate, but then they're able to take, you know, we're able to give them a lot more money at closing so that it helps offset maybe the money that they're going to come out to pay the additional uh, sales price if the appraisal doesn't come in to meet that additional. So um, read through this when you want. If you've got any questions, let me know. We do. We still have our 801010 program up to one and a half million. Um, we can do the uh, premium pricing. Oh, the MI, if that's better, maybe put 10% down as opposed to 20. And then you've got that other 10% to maybe pay a little bit more. We can maybe do an 80, uh, I'm sorry, like 90% loan. And they'll have a little mortgage insurance, but that's that will drop off eventually. That and showing them the um, the chart where it says about how much equity you're going to, um, on average, you know, see in this amount of time, MI would automatically drop off um, either when it hits the the regular schedule, or if the borrower says, hey, it's been a month, Jody, and I saw this house sold, and 
and blah, blah, blah. And I'm ready to, you know, drop the MI. We'll do an appraisal. They have to pay for it. Um, but we'll do an appraisal. And if it's, if it's there, then MI drops off. Maybe they've paid it one month, two months, maybe a year. We don't have any requirement. They have to pay it a certain amount of time. Some lenders have a two-year requirement. Same thing we just talked about premium pricing. So, but this is just good reference for you guys. Now note, this interest right here, this is back from July. Okay, so this is a little bit outdated pricing chart, but the, the concept is the same. Um, a little bit higher interest rate, you can see where you get a little bit more money back, that negative number. Our 801010 um, that I talk about quite often, if not every single time I'm on one of these calls with you guys, is uh, it, we're still rocking and rolling. We that fingers crossed we're requesting for it to go up a little bit over one and a half million I don't know if they're going to uh, allow that but um, I don't see a ton of, of people that are doing an 80 10 10 over one and a half million on, on the loan amount anyway so it's not super super um, popular I guess but if you do have that situation you know it's something that we could potentially go over but right now it is published as 1.5 on the loan amount which means if you look at the little chart here below, you can go higher on your purchase price, even up to 1.8 million, okay? Because it's the loan amount that can't go over one and a half, not the purchase price. So you you can still do, you know, 1.8 million with a, you know, 10% down loan. That's crazy. I mean, I don't really know any other lenders that do that. Maybe maybe if you, if you do great, um, but you know, that's, that's pretty awesome because if someone's a little bit short on cash or maybe they just don't want to pull all of their cash out of retirement or stocks or something like that and you know create a taxable event then this is a way to advise them hey leave your leave your extra 180,000 in your stocks so you're not getting hitting hit with you know in, uh, income taxes off of any of that profit that you've sold and let's just do the 10% uh, home equity line of credit, you know, there's no tax implication to that, to the negative. So um, again, you're, you're helping them understand the process, understand their options, uh, giving them more of a thing of value, right? Thinking about long-term um, financial impact of the different types of loans that they can take. So anytime you can help someone save on taxes, uh, then, you know, you're going to be a hero. Bridge loans. So we are doing bridge loans. Um, we're calling them bridge loans. They, uh, that's what we can do where we can uh, do a up to a $500,000 line of credit. If someone is trying to buy a new house, but they haven't sold their current house, and maybe their equity is sitting in that current house, and they can't access it, but they need it to buy. So we can do a, a bridge loan. It's called a bridge HELOC, really where we give them a, up to $500,000 HELOC. Now they still have to qualify for it and all of that, but um, we can get into the details of that later. It's not just like, oh yeah, here you go. It's not just based on equity, okay? It's, you, you still can't have like an 80% debt to come ratio with that because what if they don't sell it? And then now they're cash strapped and we put them in a situation to not be successful in their home ownership. So you still have to qualify for it, but, um, um, but we do offer that. OK, and it is going to be priced as investment property because clearly they're changing owner occupancy from this property to this property. And you can only have one owner occupied property um, at a time. OK, every 12 month period. So we have that. If you guys have anybody that says, well, you know, I, I want to sell my house and buy this house over here, but I don't think it's going to happen quick enough. So I, I won't be able to do it. Oh, wait a second. Jody talked about a bridge loan. Let's talk with her. Let's see what the what it looks like financially. And is it something that you can do? And if so, then that's something that we uh, that Golden One offers. Same thing. This is just a little bit more info on it. Um, this is just to kind of put it out there in the back of your guys' mind that we are pretty lenient on residency and visa statuses. So if you've got someone that, you know, maybe they were denied by a traditional bank or a broker or somebody that said, well, we can't um, close you until your visa is approved. Um, golden one with some you know within reason we we might go ahead and lend on that we I just just did have this happen if um, uh, the, the agent that you know who you are <laughs> um, but the guy ended up with his visa approved um, before closing so um, so just keep that in the back of your mind if you hear somebody in the office or one of your friends says this or that about it um, give me a call and we can look, look at their situation um, 
keep this for your records. I'll let you guys know if this changes. We um, I do have a meeting this afternoon in our office, and I'm hoping to get some some updates on some of our um, guidelines and maybe lending amounts that we can go over, um, things like that. Um, so when I do get all of that solidified and find out for sure what we're doing, um, then I'll do another call with you guys and let you know. It wouldn't be anything to the worse of this uh, of any of these offerings. It would be um, it would be for the better. Okay. We already talked about that, bit over ask. That's the tool I use. You guys can't have access to this, unfortunately, um, unless you maybe sign up um, with this, the company that we use, MBS Highway is the name of it, if you ever wanna take a look at that. But um, for the most part, just send me the MLS number or the address and I can plug it in and get that over to you in about uh, 60 seconds. Um, keep this also in the back of your mind. Okay, do they qualify? I get this question a lot. What's the rate? What's the rate? What's the rate? What's the rate? Well, that's important for sure, no doubt. But do you qualify? Let's find out if you qualify first, and then we can figure out what's the interest rate going to be when you have a contract. Okay, so you can't lock the loan until you have a property address. The interest rate follows the property address, and it has it happens where people they get so focused on the interest rate they want to go with a lender that that gives them a quote. You know, three months prior this is the rate for today. And then three months later, they go under contract, they go with that lender. They've never, they haven't done any pre-approval. They haven't given any pay stubs or credit pull. Then all of a sudden their debt to income ratio is a 58%. They don't qualify. So how important was the rate then? Not at all. So um, when you guys are out there talking with your clients, uh, please stress the importance of making sure that they're qualified, that they've been reviewed. Um, by underwriting, um, if you don't know this already, there is a change to the 2022 um, California uh, Residential Purchase and Sale Agreement that will have a little section on the lender part that will say that this is a pre-approved um, buyer with underwriting review or without underwriting review. That's huge, and I love it. I'm glad they put that in there. My letter can only do so much. My phone call to a listing agent can only do so much. But when that's in the actual contract, you know, it's it's solid. They sellers know, oh, they have already been um, approved or pre-approved is what it's going to say in the contract. Um, this other these other three offers don't have that. They they said that it's not if they even answer it at all. Maybe they don't even answer it. Um, what do you think they're going to go for? Probably the one that's with underwriting approval. Now, what does that mean? That means that the lenders are going to be carrying the burden of getting all of those loans underwritten right with no not being compensated for it or anything like that i'm not talking about me i'm talking about you know the the resources it takes to underwrite loans before you have a contract it does take time an underwriter does have to spend you know physical time going through reviewing pay subs signing off on things conditioning items things like that um, but we will do it um, in some cases you don't need it done if, if you're just a w-2 employee um, pretty basic, you know, you've got your base income, your assets are all your own, there's no weird large deposits, there's no funky stuff happening, um, then we can run under um, automated underwriting and, and then check that box still. Um, if it's me, if you're working with me, I'm going to, I'm going to look at pay stubs, W-2s, bank statements, tax returns, I'm going to look at all of that before I give even just my regular letter, okay, so I don't make a habit to just shoot over a letter to somebody just because they say, well, I think my credit score is a 740. Um, no way. So when you get your letter from me, it's it might as well have been underwritten. OK, I'm not an underwriter, but um, but we but but running automated underwriting um, is is pretty much the same for something super similar um, or I'm sorry, super simple below where it says conditional approval with underwriting review. That's those are, in my opinion, any of these situations apply, then we definitely need to have an underwriter review it. And I mean a physical underwriter, no matter if my underwriting approval that I run autom automatically, if it gives me an approval, great, but I'm still going to want an underwriter to look at this. Okay. So these are some of the situations. If you have a client that maybe they don't have a lender yet and they say, well, I've got RSUs or I'm self-employed or whatever situation that might fit them, maybe their credit challenged a little bit, then we're going to go ahead and fully underwrite them. And they'll have a letter from underwriting that says it's been conditionally approved and it will list out the conditions. OK, and so that's a pretty powerful letter as well. 
Okay. Um, well, that's 30, 40 minutes or so, not bad. Um, I've got to be in my office at two, but um, I'm fine for another 20 minutes or so. If you guys have any questions, um, Mike, I'll turn it back over to you. I, I'm not sure you want to do that, but um, there are questions. Okay. Be turning it over to me, you know, kind of thing. Let me see if I can pull them up again. All right. So, so for some reasons, I don't want to questions, questions. All right. Hang on a second. So what, uh, what is the website for this real estate report card to get more information? That's, that's the co-branded marketing that, that I have to prepare for you. Yeah. So send, send Jody $20 and she'll let you know. Um, Audrey wants to know if you do Cal HFA. I know the answer, no. but go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. No, we don't. And, and just as a, a comment about that, uh, some years ago, I worked with uh, Mary West Credit Union, and we were doing Cal HFA, you know, seminars, no money down, right? No money down, you know, that sort of thing. And after a year or two, no one had ever gotten one of those loans. No one, ever. And the problem with the Cal HFA is that it sounds good until you look at income requirements and other kinds of restrictions. And I don't know anyone who's gotten one of those loans. Uh, and um, even the guy, he's no longer with them, but he said that he never ever was able to do one of those loans. Uh, Jane says that is good. I assume she's referring to your whole presentation. Um, Monica wants to know how she signs up for the co-branding. And so Monica, just text me your credit card number and pin and all that. And I'll- <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it, Don't Monica. Do it. Don't do it. Um, yeah. Monica, if, if it's Monica I'm thinking of, um, we can uh, chat about that later this afternoon if you'd like. Um, I think you just have to write a check out to the company that we use to prepare all of this, 20 bucks. I'm not monitoring that. It's not my responsibility to monitor it. So. Um, you know, I just basically have to tell you that and then I'll give you the information and then, you know, send it off or whatever. Um, but yeah, let's, we can, I can set you up with that here. So Sandra says she's had a teacher who had a Cal HFA loan. So I'll have to change my, my story about that. I know of somebody who knows of somebody who does, but let's yeah, just. That's, I would like to find out maybe too, where, um, yeah. where they so bought, does yeah. have income limitations that you almost have to make more money to even be able to qualify around here. But in some of the more rural areas, the lower cost areas, it's definitely possible. Fannie Mae does not do down payment assistance. So it would be a Freddie Mac um, backed loan. Yeah. And some of our people are not, they're not all from Silicon Valley, right? So right. some yeah. of you may be in a reasonably priced neighborhood. Um, Sandra also wants to know if you work with the housing trust first time home buyers? Uh, no, not really. I mean, they're, no. <laughs> no, and so there's two housing trusts that are operative in our area, the Silicon Valley Housing Trust and the Santa Clara County Housing Trust. And I've been to some of it. There are issues with those loans too, let's just say, particularly when it comes time for people to, you know, um, sell them. Um, yeah. Do you provide loans for multifamily? And in parentheses, it, five, it says five units or up. Five units rep is considered commercial. Residential is one to four units. So anything over four is gonna be commercial um, commercial lending, so no. And so Gavin, reach out to me. If you go through all of my YouTube you know, videos, you're gonna see one other lender, right? That I have invited several times to come and speak. He does not do any residential loans, right? He's from San Francisco. He only does commercial loans which is why, you know, I'm willing to admit to Jody that I, I, I know <laughs> to come and speak. And they're all different lenders, right? As soon as you get the five, everything is different. There's no truth in lending. There's no RESPA. Right. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different world. And none of the lenders that you could name are doing these loans if you're a typical residential agent. But if you reach out to me, I'll give you his information because I, I worked with him personally. I've sold a commercial property where he did the loan and the guy really knows what he's doing. He's based in San Francisco, only does commercial. So if you have a residential client, call Jody 
And the other guy's name is Ben Johnson. Uh, if it's not uh, residential, then um, that's what I would do. Do bridge HELOC slash loan require down payment? Can you do uh, 100% financing? Um, in a sense, that's kind of what it is. Yeah, because you're, so let me just do a quick little simple, uh, I want to say sample, but explanation. So let's just say, you know, your house, excuse me, your house, current house is worth 2 million. You owe 500,000 on it. You want to buy this other house over here. It's listed at 2 million. You want to put 400,000 down. You don't have it. Or maybe you do, you just don't want to sell stocks. Just like I said, you know, avoid taxable events. Then you can do a, up to $500,000 HELOC on the, your current residence. And then about three weeks, two, three weeks later, there's the money for you to put down on the new property. So is it 100% financing? Not for, you don't, you're not going to have 100% loan to value on this house and 100% loan to value on this house since they're two different properties. That's how you're able to use um, money from one house for another because it's a secured asset. So that's how you can borrow money for a down payment. Typically, borrowed funds aren't allowed unless it's secured by a secure asset, which property is the, the biggest thing. You can also do some um, asset-based loans against, you know, what you have um, that's not really going to be through us. But the easiest and simplest, in my opinion, is to do the, the home equity. Okay. And uh, Gavin, if you have questions about uh, uh, multifamily commercial level grade, what, whatever, and you want some assistance or want to talk about that, reach out to me. It's hey, a I, different world. Just a quick touch on multifamily. I just want to say um, this was about this time last year, I believe, or so, that um, I did a duplex in Oakland for a borrower who bought a duplex there, used FHA, because FHA is still only three and a half percent down for one to, to four unit property if the borrower owner occupies one of the units. It's still only three and a half percent down. Conventional is 15 percent down. So even, and the, the FHA loan limit goes up, the more unit the property units the property has. So if you have someone who says, well, I want to you know, buy a duplex and then rent out one side and live in the other, It's that's brilliant. Uh, this particular couple, they literally have their tenants paying their mortgage payment in the rent. Because remember, what, what's the average rent? What's it going to be in 2022? So um, three and a half percent down. Let's, you know, keep that in back of your mind. Let's uh, see if you've got anybody that would qualify for that or that, that would be interested in that. It's up to four units. Cool. Yeah. I think we've satisfied Gavin's questions for now. Any other questions? This is this is your uh, your final chance. There, I can hear the drum roll, and I'm not seeing any more. Well, I'm around. You know, if you guys have any questions, give me a call, shoot me a text. Um, I'm headed now to my office for a, a meeting with our senior leadership, so I'm hoping to get some good info out of that meeting and um, I'll send you guys all out, you know, a uh, quick update um, based on what I learned from that. Okay, but all I'm right. available to you anytime. All right, thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, if you have questions, if you have a buyer, if you have questions about loans, reach out to Jody. If you would like to improve your real estate business, uh, give me a call. I'd be happy to talk to you about that. Awesome. Short commercial. Thank you very much, everybody. Stay safe out there. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.